customers, when empowered with the right tools, like an advanced meter, will curtail their consumption at peak periods as much as 15 percent. It's all about kind of an informed consumer responding to, um, uh, to, to doing, making good decisions around energy as opposed to just thinking that energy is a given. Uh, Texas is the number one producer of wind energy. We're about to integrate by the end of next year 10,000 megawatts of energy and within the next decade uh, it'll be up to 20,000 megawatts. Hello, and welcome to World Energy Television. I'm Alex Maddox, and you're joining us in our studios here in Houston. Here in Texas, we have a saying, everything's bigger in Texas. Texas has an economy bigger than most countries around the world. We have about 10% of the U.S. population residing in our state alone. According to Governor Perry, we have thousands of new residents entering the state every day. A booming state like Texas requires a tremendous amount of energy, and that begs one big question. How will Texas sustain the capacity to meet its demand? Joining me today to answer that question are five Texans. First, Barry Smitherman, the appointed chairman of the state's Public Utility Commission. He has served on the board since 2004. John Elder, the president of CEO of Legacy Energy Solutions, one of the premier providers of total energy management solutions for both the public and private sector. Paul Marvin, the CFO of Cirrus One, a world-class data center that provides a total solutions for connectivity for clients that require 100% uptime for their business. Ray Povlich has been president of Nottingham County Municipal Utility District for the last five years. He's an engineer and a PhD. And lastly, John Arnold, attorney with Lock, Lord Bissell and Lydell. Welcome, gentlemen. As a nation, each state develops its own strategy to meet its power needs. How has Texas done this so far? In our state, the legislature gave us a deregulated market design. And that says that developers, private developers, will build generation in response to the increase in demand and in response to price signals. The PUC will build transmission to hook that generation up and deliver it to customers. And we have an aggressive renewable portfolio, really it's the best in the country, to deliver wind energy and green energy into our customers. Well, as a, a provider of high availability and high density data center services, we're certainly one of the larger consumers of power. Uh, so we continually have to uh, address not only the customer, internal customer growth, but new customers to determine how far in advance we need to build new infrastructure. Yeah, Texas is uh, definitely on the cutting edge in terms of trying to put together a real market that, um, that's, that's designed around responding to uh, economic incentives and market incentives to help to accomplish the goals of, of getting the power that we need to grow. In addition, as, as someone who represents uh, the wind energy generation business, again, the, uh, the price transparency that uh, has developed in this market has been key to developing new sources of energy to meet the demand in Texas. We're one of about 700 districts in the Houston area. Power to us means two things, reliability in the event of pumping and fire, and second, costs. Barry, how would you rate the success of deregulation here in the state of Texas? I'd say it's been a great success. We've had over 25 gigawatts of new generation built since deregulation, none of which was put into rate base. Uh, we have a renewable portfolio that really is uh, second to none. And at the residential level, we see price levels that are available to customers that will actively shop that are about the same level where prices were before deregulation began. Uh, I, I think that's right, and, and I would just add, build on the point that I made a moment ago about the, the uh, entry of new retailers of electricity. Not only do you have uh, the continued growth of some of the traditional retailers that have been in Texas, but we continue to see in our legal practice new entrants into the retail business in Texas, and I think that we would not continue to see that if there were not a strong and viable market for retail electricity in Texas. I heard a uh, CEO say last week there's not a silver bullet but maybe some silver buckshot. We need to approach this from both a supply and a demand side. Uh, we're going to need all the supply. We're going to need renewable, nuclear, clean coal, gas. 
but we're also going to need to empower customers to be able to curtail their consumption in response to price signals, to be able to adjust their consumption in the hot part of the afternoon. We are just starting down that path. I'm very encouraged that we're going to make great progress, but uh, that's the piece we need to focus on going forward. We do not have a reliable um, renewable strategy that's going to be able to get us there. It's going to be about a combination of net gas generation, um, coal, unfortunately. It's just going to be a matter of figuring out how to do it in an environmentally sensitive way and, um, and the renewables. Yeah, I agree with both the points. Uh, I certainly hope that the renewable uh, factor in in a, in a big way. By the same token, the population is growing, the business, the amount of business here is growing. And just us as a, a company continue to see growth in the amount of power that's required by all of the customers. So that's not going away and renewable can only offset it so much. Yeah, and I, I would add that it really is a question of, of the math relative to load growth because uh, Texas is the number one producer of wind energy. We're about to integrate by the end of next year 10,000 megawatts of energy and within the next decade uh, it'll be up to 20,000 megawatts and that will still remain only a fraction of the total generation portfolio relative to the, the load growth. And then the other part of the consideration with renewables is that there really is not a viable amount of solar production in Texas at this point nor of geothermal. So really the biggest part of that picture is wind and wind creates certain issues for um, grid reliability and for intermittency that, that impact not only the grid but also the economics of the generation um, to meet the demand of load. And I, on a technology front, there's also probably some factors working against us in that all the new blade server technology, they use up to 10 times as much power as some of the old antiquated systems. So companies really need to work on their efficiency or work in off hours, et cetera.